Mr. President, I also want to share a little news about another friend of mine. So I rise to share the news with the Senate that Joseph Medicine Crow, a Crow war chief and American hero, has passed away. If you look in today's Washington Post, an unusual event of somebody from the West passing away and getting a major section in the paper, uh, Joe Medicine Crow did that and he earned it in his 102 years. I know it meant a lot to the students of Western and America history to see the attention he's received in numerous publications written about him and his life and his countless contributions to the Crow people and to our nation. If you have a chance to read the tributes to Joe Medicine Crow, and I, I hope you do, you will fully understand what an amazing individual he was. Historian for his people and an important part of American life, he accomplished more in his life than I could ever describe in these remarks. As I read the articles that were so well researched, they reminded me of meeting and getting to know him when he was on the board of All American Indian Days. That was a gathering that would draw tribal members from all over the United States to Sheridan, Wyoming. They'd come to share their history, their culture, their traditions, their sports, their dances, their arts, and their crafts. I know that gathering meant a lot to him because one of his top priorities in his life was to ensure the legacy of the Crow and all tribes to see that they'd never be forgotten and their way of life would be passed down from generation to generation. In an effort to bring us all together as one and overcome the racial divides that separate us, a man named F. H. Sinclair, a columnist with the Sheridan Press who was known by his nickname of Neck Yoke Jones, came up with the idea of gathering all the tribes together in Sheridan, Wyoming to demonstrate these talents and abilities. I grew up there and I was fascinated by the event. As you can imagine, it took a substantial amount of money to organize and plan the event each year but it paid big dividends for those who were able to attend and all those who heard about it. It was a source of great pride for us all to have this time when we would come together and celebrate the culture of the tribes and the individuals who were so near to us. It provided the kind of exposure and interaction that's so necessary to bring people together and overcome prejudice and bias. I could see the difference the gathering made and the impact it had on those who attended. Events like that and the opportunity they provide help us to get to know people who come from different cultures and background and helps us to understand and appreciate each other. It removes the boundaries that are created by fear and a lack of understanding. It fosters and increases the feeling of community that makes our cities and towns better places to live. I remember how Joe served on that board and Joe helped with the Miss Indian America pageant that was a part of all American Indian days. It was a competition of young women who were chosen by their tribes based on their knowledge of their tribal culture, their history, and their traditional dress. My mother, Dorothy Enzi, worked with Joe Medicine Crow and Susie Yellowtail on the particulars that needed to be worked out to put on the pageant. My mother would then chaperone the winter to events during the year. Joe Medicine Crow had a great affection for Wyoming and a love of our land that was never surpassed. In addition to the Crow, Joe Medicine Crow was well known to the Wyoming Arapahoes and Shoshones. In so many ways, Joe Medicine Crow was an ambassador for his tribe and his way of life. He was an inspiration to us all. Joe Medicine Crow referred to his life as living in two worlds. In one, he worked with the Bureau of Indian Affairs for 32 years. Then he'd return and fit right back into the other and the culture that surrounded him. It didn't bother him that his life was divided in two worlds. In fact, he said he enjoyed them both. The tributes to him and the way he lived his life have already started coming in from those who already knew him, his family and his friends. He was a military hero serving during the Army in World War II. He was not only a student of history, he was an historian who helped to preserve the stories and the culture of the Crow. He also had a great respect for all the traditions of his people. I'll always find a sense of pride and inspiration in the words he used to describe Wyoming. He also said that although sage can be found in so many places in the West, the most sacred sage had to be collected on the tribal lands in Wyoming. 
Joe Medicine Crow has given 102 years of his life, and he made the most of every day. He has a record of which we can be very proud. That's why I hope you will seek out the stories about him that made him such an important part of our history. In 2009, President Barack Obama presented him with the highest honor awarded to a civilian, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. I know it must have meant a great deal to him to be so recognized, not for himself, but for what he knew it would mean to current and future generations. Now he's passed on from this life and left behind more accomplishments and achievements than we could possibly imagine. His life was like that. 102 years of making a difference every day. A difference that will always be remembered and never be forgotten. I yield the floor. I yield the floor.